Today we're going to talk about a really handy extension which comes in particularly useful when you're documenting your code or writing comments in code to explain a certain situation. Here I am in the code base for Test Databot, a library I maintain to help make it really easy to build data for your unit tests, and we'll leave a link to that in the video description. What I'm going to do today is add documentation comments to some of the functions. Let's say I want to start generating documentation based off the source code, so I'm going to add tsdoc comments. tsdoc is a standard for writing documentation, and again, there'll be a link in the video description. So let's take this bool function. Now this is what in test data bot we call a generator. The bool function lets you generate a piece of data that will either be true or false. It will be a random value, one of the two, and we want to document that. So I'm going to start by popping up some documentation. So if we do slash followed by two asterisks and hit enter, VS Code auto completes that for us, which is really nice. And now I'm just going to add a quick description of the Boolean generator. So generate a random Boolean, either true or false. Now this bit of documentation is easy, it's pretty succinct, I don't really need to do much more there. Now let's move down to the sequence function. Now the sequence function is a bit more complicated. You give it a function, it will call that function every time with a different number x, starting from zero and incrementing. This is useful if you want to generate different data every time. So there's a bit more to describe here, and you can see again VS Code has already filled in the app param for me. This isn't the extension, it's doing this all out of the box. So let's write some documentation. I'll document the user provided function parameter, say a function function that takes in the number that the sequence uh, generator gives and should return the value you want to set. Now notice that I've typed that and that's quite a long sentence. It's gone way off to the right of my screen. It's uh, a long column and it's over the limit that we typically use. If we look through all this code and I'm formatting this with Prettier, you'll see that we're aligned roughly at 80 columns. Unfortunately, Prettier won't format this long comment. If I hit save here, it's not going to format it. And that's where the rewrap plugin comes in. This makes it really easy to rewrap your code comments to a certain length. So if I highlight this block and I hit Command Shift P, it would be Control Shift P on Windows, and I'm going to do rewrap, and then I'll do rewrap comment slash text. And you can see this will be Alt Q by default. If I hit enter, you can see that it's going to wrap that for me uh, and by default, I believe it wraps to 80 columns. If you wanted to wrap it to a different number, let's undo that, I can do again, and now I can say rewrap, and I can say at column, hit enter, and it says enter a column number to wrap the selection to, or you can leave it blank to remove the wrapping. So let's say I want this really tight for whatever reason and hit 50, you can see it's now gonna wrap that for me. This is really, really nice for making sure that when you're commenting and or documenting your code, you make sure that your comments match the rough line length you're going through. You can also enable the ESLint rule to make sure that you always keep your, your comments under a certain length. What I also really like about this plugin is it lets you turn on auto wrap. So if I go to toggle auto wrap here and hit enter, you can see at the bottom in my status bar down here, it says auto wrap on now. So now let's start typing and I'm just going to deliberately type a very long sentence. So one that takes a different number every time. And you can see that as I've typed, I haven't hit enter there at any point. The plugin, the rewrap plugin is automatically doing that for me. The rewrap plugin also works in markdown files. It works in code comments across all languages. It's smart enough to know how to comment and what to do in terms of syntax as you add more lines or as it re-indents your comments. It's become a really invaluable part of my VS Code setup and I highly recommend giving it a go.